If you didn't know better and you weren't listening carefully, you might say the Pope has become a Lutheran. It's time for Wretched. There is no freedom without the law. It is imperative that you use God's principle. I actually go ghost hunting a lot. Yeah, have you found any? Yes. Really? Satisfy yourself, I think. It doesn't matter. All will leave there anyway. Hello and welcome to our Wretched. My name is Todd Friel. I am your host, the wretch the song refers to. Now that we have every Lutheran's attention and maybe a couple of Catholics too, wow, did you hear the sermon the Pope delivered where if you didn't know better, you'd think he's a Protestant, but that's just the issue. You have to listen very, very carefully and you discover, nope, Roman Catholics still believe in infused righteousness, and Protestants still believe in imputed righteousness. Got to take a close look at this, because I have to tell you, there seems to be a concerted effort these days to blur the lines when it comes to the doctrine of justification. You know, the one that the reformers fought over. Sort of works like this. Uh, this is a... This is, this, is, this is the Roman Catholic position on justification right here. And, and then you've got the Protestant definition of, of, of justification. And they are poles apart. But these days, Catholics seem to be straining to rewrite it. And Protestants are, we're rewriting and Oh, look, we're Catholics and Protestants together. We all believe the same thing. No, we don't. And don't let anybody tell you differently, even though... The Pope sounded like a Protestant. Here we go. This is what the Pope had to say about the doctrine of justification. Luther's expression, sola fide, in other words, faith alone, is true. Now, if he had, if he had just put a period there, then we'd be a little closer. But this little if right here is kind of the problem. You Please read this very, very carefully, because if you don't, I'm telling you. If faith is not opposed to charity love. Faith is to look at Christ, to entrust oneself to Christ, to be united to Christ. We all say amen to that, to be conformed to Christ. Now, wait a second, to his life. Now, right there, you get a little hint of what's going on. Faith is not being conformed to his life. Faith is getting saved and being justified. To be conformed to his life is sanctification. So right away, you get a little hint of what's going on. And this has always been the difference between Catholics and Protestants. Catholics believe that justification and sanctification, actually this is the international Catholic symbol, for they go together, Protestants say, no, we are justified, we are seen as perfect, and then we begin the process of sanctification. There's a huge difference. One is by grace alone through faith alone, sola fide. The other one is a work-righteous system. Back to the Pope. And the form, the life of Christ, is love. Hence, to believe is to be conformed to Christ, to enter into his Love. Let me share with you what the Heidelblog website said. This is a guy who teaches at, I believe, West, Westminster Seminary in California. Explained it in articulate terms because kind of demands it. Here we go. Formed by love means made a reality by sanctification. Love here is a synecdoche. Um, it's sort of like a metaphor without like or as. It's a synecdoche for all the graces which we confess in WCF 11. Uh, that wasn't a, uh, a wrestling match, by the way, Catholic doctrines. Accompanying justification for Benedict and for Rome, these graces do not merely accompany and give witness to the reality of faith and justification. They are the ground and instrument of justification. This is what Benedict means when he says to conform to Christ and to enter his love. This is code for to be gradually sanctified and gradually justified. For Protestants, sanctification is gradual, but justification is a definitive event. It is the divine announcement that sinners have been declared just on the basis of the actual, real righteousness of Christ imputed to them. Now, almost, ooh, if you think the prophetic gift of telling the future was, was actual, you would think that John Calvin actually had it. He wrote this in 15, give or take. Listen, listen to what he said about the passage that Pope Benedict used. John Calvin. When you are engaged in discussing the question of justification, beware of allowing any mention to be made of love or of works, but resolutely adhere to the exclusive particle. Yeah, and that's exactly what he did. Because 
faith working itself out in love is working. It sounds Protestant, what the Pope said, and we would rejoice if he would say it is by grace alone, through faith alone, and Jesus alone, because then people could understand that they could have all of their sins forgiven, past, present, and future, and that yoke of work righteousness could be gone, and Jesus would get all the glory. But he didn't. Back to his speech. Thus, in communion with Christ, in a faith that creates charity, the entire law is fulfilled. No, the entire law was fulfilled in Jesus. It gets applied to us. The difference between what he said in Protestant theology, uh, frankly, is the difference between heaven and hell. Because we can't work it out. It was worked out for us by Jesus, and if we try to do it, we won't be saved because it would rob him of his glory. The Pope concluded, thus, at the end of this gospel, we can almost say, Love alone, charity alone? No, it's faith alone. Ligon Duncan, Presbyterian fella, good preacher in Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere down south, give or, give or, give or take, kind of summarized the whole shebang very, very concisely, uh, unlike me. Here's Ligon Duncan. What does he mean when he speaks of love as integral to justification? If he means that justification is always accompanied by sanctification and thus faith by love, well, then the Pope's a Protestant. But if he means that justification is on the basis of or indistinguishable from sanctification or enabled by a moral renovation that entails and is expressed in our love, then he's with Trent. And perhaps you're asking yourself the question, what exactly is Trent? Isn't that, isn't that one of those uh, Christian worship bands? No, uh, it, it shouldn't be. It was a council that happened in 15... that called you and me, dear Protestant, anathema, damned. And we'll show you next that the Pope is not a Protestant. I'm wretched.